dies and sung and lost invisible to history. Welcome back to Invisible Incorporated, I'm Zach, and today we're going to give you our last and only Breath of the Wild timeline theory before the game comes out. Watching the trailers through the game, we notice many things that could possibly connect Breath of the Wild to any timeline, like the return of the Rita of the Forum, both of which have only appeared in one game so far, that being Wind Waker. This would connect the timeline to the Adult Link timeline, as some have speculated. But personally, I don't believe that Breath of the Wild falls in this category, for a few reasons. In our last series with Game Over Tessie, where we stated our belief that the Bird people were the Rito, we also predicted that there could be multiple tribes of Zora still alive. It would seem with the release of the latest trailer that we were right about that too, with many variants of the tribe itself appearing to be the regular Zora, Sea Zora, and the Rito. It may not be the same looking variant that we have come to know and love, and that is for one very specific reason. Species evolve differently over time, and seen as though there are three separate timelines not including the unified timeline, it's very possible to have the same species, but due to a different circumstance, they evolve slightly differently. Take Charles Darwin, who studied finches and found multiple different variants of the same species. This is the same for the Zora. Different situations lead to a different evolutionary line. Now you may be asking, if we don't believe it's in the adult timeline, then what timeline is the game in? Well, we narrowed it down to two, let's discuss some of the other possibilities. There is a possibility it's in the child timeline. This is suggested in Twilight Princess HD with the appearance of the stone depicting the Rita in a timeline they didn't exist in. But I think that this was just a nod to the fact that the Rita would be in Breath of the Wild. As I stated in the last theory video, another connection we can make is the appearance of the Zora tribe in this timeline. If we look to the Queen of the Zoras in Twilight Princess, we can see she has a slightly red or pink hue, just like the supposed royal Zora we can find in the latest trailer. In Twilight Princess, the other two variants of Zora are nowhere to be seen. I don't think that the two species variants would have died out in the small time frame it would take for Twilight Princess to take place in. We know that it would be a small time frame due to the fact that Rudo ages just as fast as Link does in 7 years from Ocarina of Time. This gives the idea that the Zora most likely Sarah lifespan similar to humans. You may say that the Zora King didn't die in that time frame though. Well, the answer to that is very simple, with two possibilities. One being that Link pulled the Master Sword from the pedestal of time, he only aged seven years. It's hardly enough time for someone to grow old and die. Assuming the Zora King was only middle aged. The other solution is like Zora's domain, the Zora King was frozen in time, unable to age. Moving on, we also know that the game can't take place 100 years after the events of Ocarina of Time, because of one simple reason, the Goron. Obviously, the Goron appear in Breath of the Wild. And it is almost a fact that the Gorons live an incredibly long lifetime, well past 100 years. But in Breath of the Wild, the chief Goron is named Garukaruna, rather than Darunia from Ocarina of Time. This does not mean, however, that the game takes place before the split in the timeline. So we have narrowed it down to one timeline, the Downfall timeline, with many connections to all the above timelines. Why do we think it falls in this timeline? Well, there are many reasons, actually. IG Alnuma stated recently that the game takes place in a timeline where Ganon has been defeated many times. Keep in mind that he said that Ganon has been defeated many times in the particular timeline. This does not mean it takes place at the end of the timeline. It simply means that the game takes place in that specified timeline. We can also look to this clip said by an unseen person in Breath of the Wild. The history of the royal family of Hyrule is also the history of the Calamity Ganon, a primal evil that has endured over the ages. And what timeline has Link defeated Ganon the most in? That's right, the Downfall Timeline. There is another connection we can make to the Downfall Timeline, the placement of the Master Sword, supposedly in the Lost Woods, surrounded by beautiful blue flowers normally found in the Downfall Timeline, as seen in other games. Now that we have pinpointed where in the timeline the game takes place, I believe we can actually pinpoint at what point in the timeline the game takes place in. Keep in mind that the map size or differences in the world should not affect your judgment on the location in the timeline or the game. The creators of the Zelda franchise have stated they keep the game interesting, they like to change the map rather than rehashing the same map over and over again. For example, the map seen in Ocarina of Time is almost completely different to the map in Twilight Princess. And so without further ado, we believe the game takes place after Ocarina of Time and before A Link to the Past. There are many hints in the trailer that keep us guessing, but the coincidences that A Link to the Past shares with Breath of the Wild are so vast that it's hard to ignore. 
we can find several quotes in the game in relation to the great calamity that happened in the past. It's interesting that calamity is used so much in this game, similar to the calamity Ganon. For example, when you enter the desert, you can find a cave where a man tells you some lore about the game. It's interesting to note that this man is probably homeless and his advice shouldn't be taken too literally. And he lives in a fucking cave in a desert. Where does he get his sustenance from? Who is this old man? This game star returns. Star returns. Star returns. He also provides a hint on where to find the book Medora. This book allows you to translate ancient Hylalian into a readable text. Using this book, we can translate multiple tablets and shrines, the most notable being one at the Master Sword location. The Master Sword tablet saying, The Hero's Triumph. The Hero's Triumph over the Cataclysm's Eve wins three symbols of virtue. The Master Sword, he will then retreat, keeping the Knight's line true. With all these coincidences adding up, it seems hard to deny that Breath of the Wild falls in the downfall timeline before a link to the past. Thanks for watching. Please comment, like, and subscribe. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter. The link's in the description. And don't forget to come back on Thursday for our next Zelda video featuring Sisizi. Bye!